What is up, my Squirtleites? It is I, your king, welcoming you back to more Let's Play Destiny. In the last episode, we finished off the last of the Lost Sectors here in the Dreaming City. There's still a couple of more patrol-related things that I want to discuss in due time, and we will, but for right now, we're going to be focusing on the Blind Well today, which is the major activity that can be done here in the Dreaming City. And it's a pretty fun one, actually. It's one I still find myself playing to this day. However, before we do that, there is one particular topic that I haven't discussed that has changed a bit between now and the release of Forsaken that I should probably go over, and that is power level. So if we go into the menus really quickly, we can see our power here, which is 1529. You can see 1529 gear plus zero bonus. Now, this hasn't changed too much, the actual way that power level works. It's a combination of the power of all of your weapons and armor combined into one, Pretty simple. The bonus comes from the seasonal artifact, which is something we haven't picked up, and we'll have to wait for a little bit, a, a little while before we're able to get to that point. But you can get bonus power levels by leveling up the seasonal artifact. Otherwise, it's just your gear score. Now, Destiny has three different, uh, I guess it actually has four different power levels that you need to be concerned with. There is the power floor, there is the uh, there is the level cap, the base level cap, there is the power level cap, and there is the pinnacle level cap. These are all important for different reasons. The power floor in the game at the moment, at the time I'm recording this, is 1350. Basically, everything that is not a part of the current season and the current expansion is 1350. If we go into the destinations sector, we can see moon, we've got activities in here, power level required 1350, 1350, 1350. Everything requires you to be 1350, which is the base power in the game. Beyond light, 1350, 1350. Very simple. This is how you start the game at this level. This is usually the power cap of the last expansion, if that makes sense. Then you have the standard level cap. The standard level cap is necessary to play most of the regular game content. In When The Witch Queen came out, it was 1,500. Uh, but with each season, this number is increased by 10. So at the third season of The Witch Queen expansion, it is now 1,530. I'm technically off because this hasn't been infused. But otherwise, everything else is 1,530. Then you have the power level cap. Power, gear, power level gear is only gotten by doing very specific activities. Uh, this is through things like prime engrams and by doing uh, certain types of strikes. In fact, if we look on the destination, uh, map, I can actually find a couple of these things. So, for instance, Nightfalls, like right here, you can see Powerful Gear, Tier 1. That allows us to work up towards the power cap, which is 1550. However, after the fact, actually, actually, I believe now it's like 1570, but after the fact, then we have the pinnacle cap. Now, the power cap can be gotten through a lot of different means. There's a lot of different pieces of gear that are willing to give it to you. Like I said, prime engrams, these can contribute towards the power cap. They're all very useful. But the last one is the pinnacle cap. Now, the pinnacle cap can only be gotten to by playing very specific set activities. The pinnacle cap is only 10 levels above the power cap. It is basically supplemental power on top of the power that you already have. It is a bonus. It is an added benefit. It is a very small differential to chase over the course of a given season. Before in Destiny, there were a very high power level requirements that were uh, that were basically demanded of the player as you leveled up throughout a given expansion or season. They have since decided to tone that down quite a bit, so that's why the pinnacle cap is so effectively inconsequential in comparison to the standard power cap nowadays. Um, it used to be a much wider gap you had to worry about, now it's not so bad. So. I'm not at the power cap, I'm at the base level cap, which means that I can't do things like nightfalls quite yet, and I can't do, I, I, I can't do like a high level version of the current raid, but I probably can do like a normal version of the current raid, etc, etc. The reason I say all of this is because for this expansion, Forsaken, and the next expansion, Shadowkeep, and the next expansion, Beyond Light, Leveling doesn't matter. None of it matters. It's all superfluous. It's all just stuff that you can pick up and you can do right now. There's nothing else you need to worry about. We don't got to get worry about all that leveling until a little bit later. 
Okay, apologies for that cut. Now we get into the blind well, and let's talk about this. So this is already in progress, which is going to make it a little bit hard to explain, but I'm going to do my absolute best here. So this right here, this little thick fog this uh, that you're in, that you're just this milky, terrible fog is known as Touch of the Deep. In Touch of the Deep, you will take damage over time as long as you are in it. What you need to do is you need to constantly replenish this Touch of the Sky buff that you see in the corner. You can get this by standing inside of these orbs here that uh, will protect you. This this giant glowing orb that's around me. This central location that I am in here is where you start the event. You put a charge of light into this well to begin to the blind well. And charge of light tier threes are the only ones that matter. These are the things that I grabbed from Petrovenge a few episodes ago. Um, probably should show that right here. Uh, charge of light tier three right here. You deposit these into the blind well. It begins the activity. Uh, it's in uh, each of these little orbs here. These right here correspond to a different charge. Just make sure you're putting in the right one. Once you do that, this uh, glowing area is going to open up and the deep is going to infest the rest of the arena. What you need to do is you need to stay within this area or venture outside it for a few seconds if you must to kill enemies and basically just wipe the entire room clean before the timer runs down. After you have done that, another one of these wells will spawn in a different location. We're gonna actually head on over to the one that these guys are in. So you can see right here, they've got a little orb around them right here. This is the next spot. This is another safe spot, but again, you can venture in and out of it at, at various times. However, as you're killing enemies, specific types of enemies are going to spawn. These enemies are known as uh, anathemas, which are these glowing guys right here that will drop these orbs, and they will give you a buff called Harmony. Harmony is a buff that allows you to generate your super insanely quickly and resist the touch of the deep debuff. On top of that, while Harmony is active, you can damage the shielded enemies known as Servants of the Plague. Servants of the Plague are, well, they're basically invulnerable until you damage them with Harmony. They're, they have larger health bars and they drop three of those orbs that give you Harmony. Now, the orbs don't stay around forever, so you do have to kind of balance them but you do need them to damage them. And in fact, we're going to actually see them in even more action here with these guys. So after you finish an entire run of Blind Well and you have, or you have taken out three of these or filled up three of these things down here, these three bosses are going to spawn, the Her Heralds of the Plague. You need to kill them in two minutes, which is it's honestly not too hard to do. Um, they, they've got a bit of health, but honestly, if you just keep spamming supers at them, which is really easy to do with Harmony Active, They'll, they'll all go down with relatively little issue. So I'm going to throw the next one down over there, even though he's already almost dead. Kill him really quickly. Let's get another one. And then I think the third one's up at the top of the stairs. Yeah. I can just grab that again. And you, can, you don't just have to use supers, too. You can use anything to damage them while they're in harmony. But once they all go down, now is when the charged, uh, the unstable charged, uh, piece goes in and you put this in here and then it join uh, it activates the heroic version now the heroic version is dependent on what what week it is this is the weak curse week so therefore we get the scorn bosses on the medium curse week it's a hive boss and on the uh, heaviest curse week it is a taken boss the this week these scorn guys have a shield you take down the shield by blowing up the scorn that spawn at their feet it makes them vulnerable and then you kill them very simple. There are a lot of people in here, so it kind of made it hard to demonstrate, but that is how it works. Don't worry, though. We're going to do another run so I can take this a little bit more sm slowly. After you've done this, you get a chest, and you have finished the event. You get yourself a little bit of a reward, and all is well with the, wor the world. Now, remember that gateway between World's Bounty that I left over at Petra? That gateway uh, between World's Bounty is only done by doing the blind well. And a single heroic run gives you 50%. So you need to do two of these to finish that bounty. It's very, very simple. I'm actually going to put in a... Well, I think this guy's probably going to beat me to it. But we're going to deposit that charge of light tier 3 and start the next round so we can do this fresh. And I've actually got Jotun with me this time so we can use that. And maybe I'll be able to actually show these servants of the plague and how they work because they are actually necessary for a couple of things. Once the well hums to life, there we go. So the orb starts out small, but it will grow over time. And, uh, well, thus making the safe space a little bit bigger over time. And it all, it all makes sense as you play. But this is a very simple activity that basically just kind of allows you to kill things a lot and use abilities a lot. It's very fun. 
actually in that regard. Not not a lot not enough uh, activities like it in my opinion. Granted, it's more of just a power fantasy activity than anything. I'm probably not going to get away with using Jotun too much here, because these guys seem to be very adept at the weapons they're using and are stealing a lot of my kills when I use really slow weapons. So I'm going to stick to using my Smig a little bit more as I take damage. Let's kill that guy so I can heal up a little bit. There we go. Cool. All right. So we're just going to take all these enemies out. You see the light deposited, deposited percentage going up in the top left. Once that hits 100%, we're done. So now all the enemies despawn, and the next location uh, starts, and it will point you in that direction. Off we go. So let's head to this one next, and you have plenty of time. I mean, the Touch of the Deep does take, like, several seconds to kill you, so you, you don't have to wait too long. You just have to not be careless and uh, let it run out while you're already, like, low on health and things like that. That's, that's really what it comes down to. So I personally, for this part, I actually like to play towards the middle one more, because this is more where the anathemas will actually spawn at. So let's uh, try to get some kills here if I can actually fire my shots. And I mean, you can always replenish this relatively easily. It's not too hard. Jump back in there. Get that whole thing back again and again. There's the anathema over there. So let's kill it. And now it is dead. It's going to drop the orb. And now I have harmony. So there is the servant of the plague right there. That guy with the shield. I'm going to kill, uh, hit him with the grenade. Do a lot of damage. He drops three orbs, which my teammates can now pick up. And now everybody's able to get supers like crazy. So then we can start basically spamming them. I wouldn't say all the way spamming them, but quite a bit. There are also exotics that synchronize with this uh, whole harmony situation pretty well. A good example of those is the Shards of Galanor, which works with Blade Barrage. It will basically allow you to immediately use the super again after every single kill. Or with the super. It's pretty crazy, actually. But you have to see it in action for it all to make sense. Jump back in here before I end up getting myself killed. And I can always uh, get more melee kills to try to help myself out. Oh, they're, they're dead. Because that is it for that well. And we move on to the next one. There's typically a pattern, too. They're not, they don't just spawn in random locations. Uh, it, there, it's usually like, okay, that one is always going to then turn into this well, which is then going to lead into that one last. Uh, every single time and then the boss round will happen after the fact it's 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 pretty streamlined but there are a lot of different uh, wells all around the room so it doesn't get too samey what location you're in if that makes sense so servant of the plague is here and i think are they gonna kill him yes they are and with that so now i can go grab myself a harmony orb and contribute my fun to this entire situation so let's do that and grab some orbs while we're at it so that I can get my super back a little bit faster. I should be able to get it pretty quickly here. You also get faster recharge on things like your grenade, which is pretty good. I mean, I'm definitely not going to complain about it. Let's do that. Another harmony. And if you don't kill the enemies too quickly, sometimes you can get up to two servants spawn per round, but it's really hard to do. This is notable because... There is one of the challenges that you can get, like the one we got where we had to go find Toland. Uh, one of the challenges you can get on a daily basis is to kill 15 uh, Plagues of the Well, which are, I mean, is basically just a gigantic waste of time because you basically have to do like four or five Blind Well runs uh, in, I would say three in the absolute best case scenario, but it's really just not even worth trying to do... Uh, any uh, any less than that because it's just not going to work at all. It's, it's very frustrating. It's, it's a bounty I would highly recommend you don't ever pick up. So, But that is something that is notable and worth uh, talking about because of... Oh, and if I can grab that. I did not grab that, apparently. Let me grab that. Thank you. Okay, can I get that melee, please? Perfect. All right. Where is that servant at? I think they already killed him. Possibly. I think they did. But... Charge is complete. We're good to go. And I'm not really having to contribute a whole lot here because, like I said, I got some pretty uh, good good helpers here anyway. So now come the bosses. Once again, kill the anathemas. Grab the harmony orb. Hit the boss with your super. Whatever else you can throw at it's pretty good. I'll see if I can hit it with Jotun a little bit, although I am taking a little bit more damage than I would like. Come on. All right, I'm going to get a melee in here before I explode. Thank you. Get that to work. 
Oh, there we go. Yeah, he's got that Curious of the Falling Star Thunder Crash, which is always beautiful. Very, very powerful super if you have the specific exotic for it, which he probably does given how much damage that did. So I'm going to grab some orbs over here while my harmony continues to regenerate. But I think, yep, he's very dead. Very dead. So now we can put in the unstable charge. Do that real fast. I'm just going to do it for you because I already bought one, so I might as well. And now it's the same bosses again. It's going to be the same bosses every single time. But luckily, we only have to do this twice. Now, once we get the score to spawn, blow him up. Down goes the shield. And now we start to do damage. He will put up, uh, much like any Scorn Captain, those un invulnerability things, which is not fun. So do be on the lookout for those. But down he goes. Very, very simple. And I think they already killed the other one. So Gateway Between Worlds is complete. We get to open another chest. I don't think we'll get a weapon. No, we do get a weapon this time. Okay, I wasn't sure if we got one the second time, but we're able to get that, and that is all she wrote. So now I can turn in all of these bounties that we have finished really quickly, and we get an offering to the Oracle. We'll be showing what that does in the next episode, because that is going to be it for this one. Guys, thank you all so very much for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this episode very, very much, and I will see you all in the next one.